Something I've dabbled in a lot, both on and off of this channel, is altered states of consciousness. Mainly through the use of psychoactive substances, but in many cases certain ways of meditation and just deep thinking can also create altered states of consciousness. And something I always bring up when it comes to these specific topics is that dyspraxia itself is an altered state of consciousness. And I never really elaborate on that, but I think it's also important to, you know, drive home that fact. Especially when someone who has dyspraxia is looking to take a substance like psilocybin or even alcohol or tobacco. So in this video, I want to touch on a little bit more how dyspraxia can alter one's consciousness pretty much from birth. So it's almost like being on a drug from the day you're born. So first things first, I think it's important to define what exactly is an altered state of consciousness. And in short, it's an alteration of one's consciousness. To define consciousness is kind of a hard thing to do. But to keep things short and to keep this video from going on a lot longer than it has to, let's just say that it is alterations of perceptions of the world as well as how we react to the world differently from how the average person typically does. So typically on this channel especially, but in many cases when discussing altered states of consciousness, typically people are referring to hallucinatory states, like that of really intense meditation or of course the use of psychedelic substances. These kind of tend to alter one's consciousness in ways beyond how most people think they are perceived. While there is a very heavily visual component, a large amount of it is how we react to what we're seeing as well. This is why most psychedelic experiences aren't like you see them on TV where it's just a bunch of pretty colors. But you also tend to have certain enhancements of acuity, like visual acuity, being able to see things seemingly a lot more clear. But also kind of enhancements of what is known as novelty enhancement or showing more appreciation towards small changes within the world. And this is something that can be echoed in many ways with dyspraxia. Many dyspraxics tend to see things a little bit more clearly or experience things with a little bit more appreciation than the typical person. Now, of course, in the case of things like psychedelics, typically this is because the 5-HT2A serotonin receptor is being agonized and it's very poorly understood as to how or why this happens. And this is why psychedelics are so incredible and are constantly being researched even as far back as the 60s. And it's also part of what makes dyspraxia hard to kind of understand because there's this almost extra depth of reality that we kind of perceive and experience to some extent. And it's really hard to kind of describe in scientific terms, but I'm sure everyone watching this video who's dyspraxic will empathize to some extent. And I don't want to imply it's anything supernatural or anything like extrasensory perception or any of that crazy, you know, naturalistic mumbo-jumbo, but to some degree we do kind of experience things with a little more depth like seeing the world with 3D lenses, so to speak. Kind of seeing extra aspects to the world. And in many cases, this is one of the biggest benefits of dyspraxia, is we tend to take on problems from a completely different point of view. And there are a couple of reasons for this. One of the big ones, and something that I've brought up a couple of times on this channel, is that dyspraxia affects two things balance and coordination, which are senses that most people don't think of, but they are senses no less. And just like how a blind person will tend to have enhanced hearing or enhanced sense of feel and touch, us dyspraxics will also have enhanced senses, typically visual, but in many cases heavy cognitive senses that kind of counteract the balance and coordination that's impaired. So in a way, it is like we are perceiving things with a little bit more clarity than most people typically would. 
Another reason for this is because we do kind of have to do things unconventionally. Our brain works a little differently than everyone else's because there's a sizable amount of lag between when we receive information and when we react to it. And, you know, the whole reception of information to begin with is lagged. Typically, we have to think things through, even really simple processes that most people kind of do naturally. And because of that, the steps that people take in regular processing that they take for granted and don't even think about, we tend to overthink about. And so we tend to see more steps in between that we can maybe, say, tweak or alter and make sometimes more efficient and sometimes not as efficient. So because of that, both our perception of the world and our reaction to it is incredibly altered compared to the average person. And so that's why I like to make the argument that dyspraxia, in a way, is an altered state of consciousness. And I know the way I put this and describe this is a lot like comparing dyspraxia to a psychedelic, but I feel like having dyspraxia isn't like naturally being on a psychedelic as it is more like naturally being high on cannabis, personally. At least from my experiences with cannabis and seeing other people in cannabis, I feel like that's what it's like. In many cases, I mean, I didn't start consuming cannabis until my 20s. And up until then, a lot of people thought that I was stoned or that I smoked a lot of weed when honestly I didn't. But the way that dyspraxia not only affects balance and coordination, but how we react to things, how we talk, how we go about things, in many cases, you know, it gives the perception to others that we are kind of high on weed. And in many cases, yeah, that's kind of how dyspraxia can be described, but I wouldn't say it's the same. I mean, I don't think I have munchies when I'm not high. Um, you know, there's a lot of differences. So I don't want to generalize it by saying, oh, dyspraxia is like being on weed all the time because there's obviously more depth and complexity to that, like there is with just about every situation. But when trying to help someone understand what it's like to have dyspraxia, that's a very good comparison to draw. And it's a large reason why I say dyspraxia is an altered state of consciousness. And another parallel that I could also compare to the use of psychoactive substances as well as deeper states of meditation is enhanced levels of anxiety that tend to come with individuals with dyspraxia. I've touched on this a little bit in anxiety with dyspraxia, but I will kind of tread over this a little bit and bring up the fact that a large amount of our anxiety comes from the fact that we're perceiving way too much information than we can handle. In many cases, certain really chaotic scenarios like have been the case with the past year and a half. But not only that, just how we think in general. We tend to overthink unintentionally. We overthink when other people just think. And this is something that is commonly seen in things with psychedelics and cannabis. And a lot of this overthinking can lead to super deep existentialist thinking, as indicated from my last video on this channel. These deep thoughts and, you know, deep insights into the world around us tend to create almost another altered state of consciousness, making us more vulnerable in specific scenarios or in areas of large amounts of perception and large amounts of chaos. And something that I've kind of started doing to help with that, and you guys may have noticed just now that I am wearing amber sunglasses. And I, I wouldn't consider this a dyspraxic life hack, but something that's actually helped me a lot. See, past couple of months I've been dealing with a lot of really bad crippling anxiety for seemingly no reason and that anxiety has led to a lot of deep existential thinking which kind of creates this feedback loop of anxiety leading to existentialist thoughts leading to existential dread leading to more anxiety and what helps feed into this is obviously a lot of light and in many places especially if you're working somewhere be it commercial or industrial, 
Typically, you also have very heavy UV lights kind of beaming down on you. And there's, there's a large reason behind this, why many companies use those light, light tubes, the fluorescent lights and the UV lights. It saves a lot of electricity and stuff. So, you know, not to the same extent that someone with a home would because you're not really doing as much at home and you're not keeping your lights on at home 24 hours like they do at businesses. But these extra lights tend to kind of amplify the lighting and surroundings around you. And the sun, too, kind of does that. So being outdoors a lot will do that as well. And I've noticed that since I started wearing these amber sunglasses, they're not like, you know, actual full-on black sunglasses so you can see my eyes. And I can see a lot more clearer than I would with just darkened sunglasses. But they also kind of look like regular glasses, so less people will be coming up to me like, hey, why are you wearing sunglasses inside? But I've noticed a lot less anxiety since I started wearing them. And this may be a placebo too, so I don't want to say that this is any kind of psychological or medical advice. Obviously, if you are dealing with a lot of anxiety, you should see a medical professional for that, get diagnosed. Some people have general anxiety disorders. In many cases, it's tied to dyspraxia in general. But, you know, I, I think it's something interesting that's helped me. So, you know, keep that in mind for anyone looking out there. Try amber sunglasses. And, I mean, the thing is, this isn't really entirely a negative thing either, I, I wouldn't say. I mean, um, while many issues with dyspraxia can be impairing, as I've indicated a lot on this channel... Many of those impairments also have positives to them, and no one, anything really, is specifically negative or positive. And I like to end my videos on a positive note, so I mean, one of the biggest positives is these amber sunglasses. I look really cool. A lot of people say I look like Hunter S. Thompson. I really like Hunter S. Thompson. Another positive, I mean, if you think about it with the cannabis analogy, is I mean, hey, you got a free high. All the time, which is cool. And it's part of why I like to make that comparison that dyspraxia is an altered state of consciousness, because it is. We have extra perceptions to some extent that no other person does, and that not only makes us individual, but it's almost like a gift as much as it is a curse. It's something that helps us exceed in many workplaces, and while I've touch on work and talk about work like it's pure hell I mean there's a lot of things that I do at work better than a lot of people because of the way I think because of the complexity of my thoughts and because I look at things a little bit more differently than everyone else and in many cases we become some of the most valuable employees typically when it comes to clerical tasks and computer tasks because it allows us to do things without being as hand-on because Dyspraxia does have a lot of physical effects, which I will touch on in a future video. Yeah, that's all for this one, everyone. I hope every one of my American viewers had a fun 4th of July. For my UK viewers, which I have a surprising amount of, hope you guys are doing well going through everything. I hear that new Delta variant of COVID is around there. And I think you guys are still dealing with that Boris Johnson guy. All right. I personally don't know much about even U.S. politics, let alone U.K. politics, so I can't say anything. But from what I've heard, I think I lost a couple of friends just mentioning Boris Johnson. Either way, I hope you all are doing well, honestly. I really hope you guys are doing well. And um, thanks for almost 200 subs now. That's crazy. I can't believe that. It's awesome. Thanks, everyone. And you guys, have a good one.